What SpaceX changed in the new design of the Starship Super Heavy that shocked the rocket industry? Change is important in life. One cannot progress further without some change in one way or the other. SpaceX is one of the biggest companies in space travel. And despite their ambition, they also need a change in order to fulfill their dream of going to Mars. Today we'll be talking about what SpaceX changed with its new design of the Starship Super Heavy that shocked the entire rocket industry. What were these changes? How were they implemented into the new spacecraft? Is the new design any good? Well, stick around till the end as we answer these intriguing questions and more as we delve into the intricacies behind the new design. Without further ado, let's begin the video. SpaceX has been notorious for its one-of-a-kind design and its innovative method of progression. They are not afraid to take risks and are well prepared for the future. Starship was built with the mission of Mars in mind. However, by building something we cannot expect to fulfill our goal without some tests and experiments. With the results due to this, we can do the necessary tweaking which might result in the Starship reaching Mars for the first time in human history. We started with Super Heavy because, while it's a simpler model than Starship in some aspects, it is equally difficult and novel in others. First, let us understand the Starship Super Heavy. A single Super Heavy booster is practically a large steel tube, measuring 9 meters wide and 69 meters long from tip to tail. It should be able to hold at least 6 or 7 times the amount of propellant as Falcon 9 and two to three times the amount of repellent as Falcon Heavy. Unlike the Super Heavy B4, SpaceX's newest Super Heavy prototype is designed to accommodate up to 33 Raptor V2 engines instead of the 29 Raptor V1 engines. While the V2 design streamlines the Raptor's design to make it easier to construct, install, and operate, it also dramatically increases maximum thrust for us by at least 40%. Regardless, SpaceX's chief executive officer, the eccentric billionaire Elon Musk, altered the design of the launcher to achieve the aforementioned goals. But how? How can one achieve these goals and make Musk's dreams into a reality? Thanks to external conduits and smaller plumbing protection, a different architecture of the pressure containers, hydraulic power units, and an umbilical pane put on its aft are all visible in the first glance. Aside from their thrust structures, gigantic steel pucks have been modified to sustain the new Raptor V2 engines, rather than the Raptor V1 and V1.5 engines that have been installed and tested on all Starship and Super Heavy prototypes so far. Its sleeve, on the other hand, was constructed out of four approximately 1.4 meter tall rings, rather than the normal three 1.82 meter tall steel rings. This is the first time in history that shorter rings have appeared on any Starbase gear. Aside from the Raptor engines, the two most significant alterations added to Super Heavy are arguably a pair of strikes like aero coverings and the installation of massive internal header tanks for landing propellant storage. It will slide over the top of two new pairs of five composite overwrap pressure vessels or sealed cops that run roughly a third of the way up to Booster 7's tanks, especially on the current prototype of a series of new sharp edge aero covers. It's feasible that they'll work in a similar way to HITS, repairing wing-like structures to increase aerodynamic stability. A Super Heavy B4, on the other hand, has four sets of two cops evenly distributed around the perimeter of the engine area. Finally, SpaceX appears to have added a full set of internal header tanks to the Super Heavy booster, allowing it to store all of the landing propellants in separate tanks. This reduces the amount of pressurization gas needed and makes it considerably easier to ensure that the Super Heavy Raptor engines receive an uninterrupted supply of propellant throughout the complex space and atmospheric maneuvers. The header tank should reduce the risks of liquid propellant being mistakenly released when the booster is in microgravity, following SpaceX's decision to turn Super Heavy tank vents into maneuvering thrusters. The new Super Heavy will undoubtedly be a game changer with these modifications. The upgrades, on the other hand, will be even more impressive to its partner. To begin, SpaceX increased the height of its Starship's nose barrels from four to five rings. The extra mass necessary to stretch Starship, roughly five and a half meters, is likely to be insignificant enough that SpaceX will stretch all Starship models instead. Stretch tanks and more propellant storage could significantly increase the amount of payload that can be sent to the moon. Mars, and other high-energy destinations for variants like the NASA HLS Moonlander and future Mars-bound starships. 
which rely entirely on refueling to reach their destinations. Next, SpaceX improved their welding technique for Starship, resulting in a more durable and attractive rocket. The Starship nose design has been extremely consistent since SpaceX began producing the first prototypes in mid-2020, with the exception of Starship MK-1, which never had its far flimsier nose entirely attached. Early prototypes were unavoidably abandoned as SpaceX iterated on the nose design and assembly procedure to produce Starship SN8, the first prototype with its fundamental structure entirely built. To be honest, despite the fact that upgrades and alterations have almost likely been made in recent months, the early unflown prototypes and noses of Starship rockets were all built in roughly the same way. SpaceX would start by making a series of thin stamped metal sheets. Each of these would be welded together to make a slightly conical ring after being aligned on custom-built jigs. Each of the five rings would be narrower and more conical than the last. The five portions would then be piled and welded together around their circumference one by one. To create the most basic structure of a nose, 120 intricate vertical walls would be required, followed by four or five equally complex circumferential wells to combine the parts into one cone. The improved design by SpaceX aims to make the process easier by expanding the size of the gores. Apart from reducing the number of longitudinal sections required to construct the cone by a ratio of two or three, SpaceX has also decreased the number of stack sections required by a factor of two or three, reducing the total number of gores required by at least a factor of two or three. While the reduction in length of both vertical and circumferential wells required to assemble a nose cone is not as significant, it is still significant. SpaceX appears to have decided to increase the size of the dome gores and minimize the number of stack sections necessary for dome assembly, likely doubling down on the stretch performing production method developed for nose cone gores. Even though Starship Plus 24 is the first ship to use the new design, it was only fully stacked last weekend. Finally, it's evident that SpaceX has installed a truly unique Starlink satellite dispenser to a portion of their next Starship prototype. The nose barrel that the putative Starlink dispenser is part of has also been installed with heat shield standoffs, ceramic wool insulation, and netting, in addition to the first completely outfitted prototype with an updated Starship nose cone design. In other words, this Starlink dispenser is quite likely to be a part of the initial orbital hardware. That suggests it's plausible that this dispenser is designed to launch Starlink satellites from Starship. Nothing is out of reach in space, thanks to the brilliant engineers at SpaceX. Under the supervision of their eccentric yet brilliant CEO Elon Musk, the company is destined for greatness. They should start the Mars mission as soon as possible so that a new chapter is born into the history of mankind. One needs to understand that only with change can we progress further. One cannot improve by not doing everything. Sometimes we even need to take a step back and change our route as the downgrade can help us find our right path. SpaceX is on the right path but needs to undertake some changes to its Starship Super Heavy if it intends to fulfill its dream of reaching and then living on Mars. So, what do you think of the changes SpaceX has implemented in the new design of the Starship Super Heavy? Doesn't it amaze you the technical difficulties behind this technology? Let us know in the comments below, and if you want to watch more of our amazing videos, then stay tuned.